this is the continuation of last lecture so qp polarized charge can be expressed as minus of surface integral p dot ds p is the polarization vector d is the elementary surface area so there is another point of view for the significance of this negative sign we have introduced the negative sign due to the fact that as the external electric field is applied to the dielectric the direction of induced electric field or polarized electric field is just opposite to the external electric field that is already des described earlier when, he, when I described the theory of polarization relation between E P and D vector then that time I have described in detail about the direction of E vector and E P vector. Since E and E P vector are in opposite direction, that's why we have introduced a negative sign. So this Q P can be replaced by minus of this one. So this can be expressed as surface integral of epsilon dot e this plus this so taking the common term dot ds we may write plus p dot ds equals to qf okay now we know epsilon dot e plus p this is nothing but displacement vector electric displacement vector d vector we have already established the relation d equals to p plus epsilon naught e so we may write surface integral d dot ds equals to qf that is the free charge so this is the gauss's law in dielectric surface integral d dot ds equals to qf Qf is a free charge, though it is minority, but in the right hand side expression, it is Qf. If we convert it into differential form, just like the previous expression, we may establish that divergence of D equals to rho f by epsilon naught. Sorry, simply rho f, not epsilon naught. Since D appears over here, epsilon naught is already included in D. So, divergence of D equals to rho f. Rho f is the free charge density. So, this is the Gauss's law, differential form of Gauss's law in dielectric. Now, let us explain a little bit about the different forms of differential form of Gauss's law in electrostatics. We know that Divergence of E equals to rho by epsilon naught. This is differential form of Gauss's law in electrostatics. It is already established earlier. Now this electric field. Now this electric field can be expressed as negative gradient of minus of grad v v is the electrostatic potential you know for one dimension it is minus del v by del x for two dimensional minus del v by del x minus del v by del y but in 3d it is minus gradient of v v is the scalar potential so electric field can be expressed as negative gradient of scalar potential this is valid for conservative force field only for conservative force field so if we put the value of E over here then this expression takes the form del dot minus grad V equals to rho by epsilon naught or del dot del means del square del square V equals to minus rho by epsilon naught so this is also differential form of Gauss's law 
and this form del square v in terms of potential expression of potential in terms of charge density this is known as Poisson's equation Poisson's equation this equation is very much helpful for solving uh, for finding out the value of v provided rho and epsilon are given and vice versa v is given you may calculate charge density so this Poisson's equation or Poisson's relation is very much helpful for calculating potential electrostatic potential as well as charge density in various cases later I will describe uh, how to apply this Poisson's equation in various numerical problems but for the time being just remember this is Poisson's equation this is the form of Poisson's equation and we can apply this Poisson's equation for uh, estimating the values of V that is the electrostatic potential provided rho is given and vice versa second case number two if rho becomes zero charge density zero if rho becomes zero in such situation del square V equals to zero this is another remarkable equation in electrostatics this is known as Laplace's equation so del square v equals to 0 charge free medium for charge free medium or some sort of symmetric distribution of charges then we can apply this Laplace's equation for finding out the value of electrostatic potential this is very much applicable in case of capacitor problem suppose we consider uh, cylindrical capacitor uh, for uniform distribution of charges or symmetric distribution of charges net charge should be equal to zero in case of that capacitor then we can apply this Laplace's equation for finding out V after estimating V we can calculate capacitance of the capacitor so these two equations are very much powerful equation for solving various numerical problems not only for solving numerical problems but also it is applicable for designing various electrostatic devices.